Hello and welcome to Ether Mini Super Chat Catch Up Hello. episode. Esmond, 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 AI Mongold episode. I forget which number. I'm sorry, but that's the one. You guys remember that one. It was, uh, as per the first message, it was two EFAPs within two days. And they said, I must yes. be blessed. Thank you, Longman. Well, thank all of us. Jam packed. Right? We, uh, yeah, we did. We did. Gosh, it, uh, the flow, the absolute pipage of of uh, of Moolah slash EFAP just, just flowing. The absolute content. About to say. Wow. River. Even oh, yes. even before then, but definitely since then. Oh, enjoy. Like the fertile crescent of the Nile. The we, content mm -hmm. we are here forth. to uh, check out some messages. That's what we're going to do. Have a little chat. It's going to be wonderful. That's right, everyone. We mm. read all of your messages. Every single message you send us. We really do. We read. We respond to with I varying think... degrees of um, enthusiasm, but that's on you. As it stands, I think Super Chat Catch-Up Day is now Monday. At least, that's what the scheduling looks like. Fridays are the Lord of the Rings movies minis, which is a new thing. And Wednesdays is TVs slash movies. Uh, Saturday is the mainline episodes. Sunday be the re-upload. And then, of course, you got Open Bar. The Thursdays, obviously, is Tuesdays. You know, it's just, you're just, if you're looking to see what we're up to across the internet, plenty of things. Plenty of things. Now, we're going to get to the messages. Second one is apparently Weedle is Egypt's favorite Pokemon. Australia's favorite is Mr. Rhyme. Not a typo, it's a Gen 8 Mon, strangely. How is this determined? Why would Weedle, why would Weedle be Egypt's favorite? I don't Let me know. Take a look. Maybe there's something about I don't know how I don't know. Surely it should be like, Meowth. It's, like uh, it's like those polls that, you know, PlayStation or Xbox or Nintendo, which one's more popular in each US state? There's got to be some methodology for it. Weedle's, Weedle's all right. Um, what is, uh, what's Mr. Rhyme? That's not, I've not heard of that one if it's like Mr. R H Y M E, I assume. No, R I M E. Oh. At least that's how they spelled it. All right. Hmm. Mr. Rhyme. Oh. It's... Okay. Here, let me show you this Pokemon and why. And so I don't this want. is this is apparently Australia's favorite Pokemon. Apparently. Alright, here's yes. a pic here's a picture of Mr. Rhyme. Hmm. <laughs> um yeah, he's not my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't like him. He's too human. This yeah, is, a, this is a weird one, yeah. Being uh, like a human, that's when it starts to get strange. Yeah, like Pokemon when they... are its best when it's an animal with some tweak to it. So Squirtle, yeah. perfect. Or like he's a turtle. Squirtle is perfect. Caterpie is perfect. Weedle's per. You know, those are those are great. Charmander, but this... yeah, yeah, or this chandelier. Is... Yeah, there's a part of my heart that wants to give this thing rights. So I'm not a fan. <laughs> not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be really weird if he, he pops up and he's like, "Hello there," and you're like, "What the fuck?" Like, oh my god, it's like power is to mimic a human. I am. Uh, I'm imagining him with the same voice as the Monopoly guy. Yeah. The Let me read you his uh, Pokédex. I'll read you its Pokédex entries. All right. Uh, please do. Do it. Oh, this is from Sword and Shield. Um, it's highly skilled at tap dancing. It waves its cane of ice in time with its graceful movements. Its amusing movements make it very popular. It releases its psychic power from the pattern on its belly. Okay, so it's a psychic Pokemon. Psychic ice. Mm -hmm. He's got an ice staff. He's psychic. Mm. I could tell that by looking at him. Yeah. He's got... I don't know if he can fly, because it looks like he's got wings on his little hat-esque looking thing there. Apparently he's semi... Him, he and Mr. Mime share a common ancestor. Let me zoom in and show you this little... Wait, like, really? Yeah. I'm not fucking with you. I would never do that. Um, let me show you this. This is on the, the website. Mr. Rhyme and Mr. Mime share a common ancestor. Apparently there's Mime Jr. And then... <laughs> it could be two forms of Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime after oh, Mime. So it's Mr. Mime, depending on the region that he's in, he'll turn into something else. Instead of Mr. Mime, he turns into. That's gotta be weird. How evolutionarily do they explain if you're in a different place when you evolve, you turn into a different thing? Well, maybe they're like different, you know, sub, you know, like the difference between I don't know, like a gray wolf and some other wolf that they're, well, they're like the wolf is the umbrella term. Well, normally it's the other way around, right? Where you live. Friends, the reasons we have, you know, Asian people, black people, white people, Hispanic people, is because generally when you have people who live in an area for a long amount of time, 
the the environment in which you live will give you different characteristics like oh i need to be able to soak up more of the sun or less of the sun or everything like that and so you slowly but surely have species that develop differences wherever they are so but but that's because the environment changes over time sort of like the genetics that you have it's not that you I'm literally wondering. change because of where you are on the planet so something to bear in mind, if I remember correctly, Sword and Shield, the, the region is meant to be based on uh, England. So maybe there's something there with him being a, a, a Mr. Rhyme with a like a little kind of kind of like a top hat looking thing and a, and a cane. Maybe. You know? It would be interesting uh, because I suppose in the Pokemon world, that means that there would be an entire market for evolution tourism, I guess they would call it where hmm. you would specifically become a tourist and go visit a different region of the world specifically so that your Pokemon could evolve there. And either for back. your... Yeah, then they come back as a filthy foreigner. Um, but I don't know how exactly that works. It's kind of odd, but I suppose that would be how it would work in the game. Like, oh, my Mime Jr. has expressed interest or because of my... Because I am its master and it does what I tell it to. I want it to be a Galarian Mr. Mime so we will go to Galar in order to make sure it evolves there so that it can become a Mr. Rhyme, uh, Mr. Rhyme one day. All so right. I need to get some plane tickets and fill out a passport. Do Pokemons need passports? Do you need to make a passport? Like a Meowth, right? Meowth would probably need a passport, right? I mean, a dog doesn't need a passport. I presume that in the Pokemon world, they're in generally the same category as pets. I suppose so. But yes, then when you Meowth have stuff like Meowth, though. who's just like a sapient living creature and also the best Pokemon. So you'd have to, cause it can like engage in criminal activity. It can have, you know, you know, you, you need a passport for Meowth, right? Nah, I would assume so. It'll be fine. Or not. Maybe it's just like, well, you know, smart cat, pretty smart cat, pretty <laughs> so, smart, cat. pretty smart cat. You know, what are you going to do? Fapping twice in less than 24 hours? Noice. Yes. Hell yeah. Moriarty, my favorite EFAP guest. How you doing? I think he was doing good. He was doing good. Uh, lemon character and baby lemon jumping in the air and doing a high five. Wow. Super sticker. Nice. Good stuff. I am pro lemon. Uh, hello? 271 episodes already? Time flies. Oh, there you go. It really does. Then. <laughs> yeah, episode 271, we got it. <laughs> Lol, where's Shad? Um, I, uh, some people were like, shouldn't this be the episode Shad was on? I did send him a message saying uh, he wasn't like kept out or anything. It was just the Shad is in a lot of EFAP stuff that you guys haven't seen yet. And we try to like a lot of people move things a lot of EFAP stuff. Bounce things around. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's why um, some people are like Drinker. You never come on EFAP anymore. And he's like confused because he did recordings for like 10 EFAP movies with us. He's like, yeah, I am. Yeah, um, just all the intermittent stuff. And also he was on like what? He was on a couple recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's 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 the thing. It's it's uh the scheduling is moving people around, giving people a shot. Obviously, we hadn't, I guess thrown our hat in properly about this AI stuff because uh, we have talked about it, but we hadn't like, you know, talked about it in the in the same way that it's been talked about recently. And I thought the Asmund Gold thing was a good place to start. And I thought we'd grab some guests that I didn't actually know their opinions on AI art at all. And I thought it could be a good blend, a good fun time, though it was, uh, it turned out controversial because I think this is one of those hot button topic-y things that everyone has uh, attached a lot of anger to in a lot of ways, which is okay. Um, we did what we yeah, could. Well. At least we had the dead rat to unify us. Yes. AI art oh episode, God. and you didn't have Shad on. I mean, you've got, like, haven't you got countless videos of his opinions on it? I don't know why. Why does he have to be on the, the, the episode? Doesn't it work to hear a bunch of people you've never heard talk about it? I thought that makes sense. And besides, you'll get loads of Shad on EFAP, trust me. You've been getting loads, actually, because the War Arc is in progress. True, it is. Wish there was a way I could have had, like, a... I don't know, Renaissance music behind me when I said that, but oh well. Um, you need, like, a soundboard for that, don't you? Yeah, I guess this, the, the production we do just isn't that good. You know? We can do a soundboard. Hey, look, right, don't, be, don't be so hard on yourself. So yeah, we, we can do, yeah, we can do a soundboard. Belgium. <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah, that was the soundboard. Uh, keep in mind that the results you get from typing in a sentence into ChatGPT versus using the proper syntax for the program are usually very different. I would not be surprised by that. There's going to be... 
uh, different layers and levels to using these programs. It's, uh, it was more so looking at the theory of it all, I guess. Or trying to. Uh, Mola, did you know that Asmund Gold watched your entire DS2 series and he said that he 100% agrees with you? He even played through DS2 and hates it. That's funny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was aware of that, but it's still funny because <laughs> it's, it's DS2. If the right person plays it, they will be pissed off by that game more than any other. It's, uh, mm -hmm. I do one day want to watch Fringy play through it all live. What? Uh, well, just. Dark Souls 2 specifically. Yes, because I'm curious what your play style with Dark Souls will do in that game. I don't know if you will be benefited by it or if it'll be a curse. I have uh, no idea. Which one am I meant to play? 2 or Scholar of the First Sin? Oh, Scholar of the First Sin, for more, sure. Is that the one that's more me? That's the one my video is about because it's the one that I settled on after seeing dev comments about it, right? Like, not devs, the developers' I comments. They, they presented it as the definitive version of the game, is... I presume. Comes complete with the DLCs and it's supposed to have changes right. according to like their preferences for the vision they had for the game. But most people agree that oh, it is yeah. the worst vision, which is funny. I mean, that's, <laughs> that is pretty uh -oh. funny. Um, that will be pretty demoralizing. But yeah, he said some uh, some nice things about the videos. I think he resonated with them, which is cool. A lot of people do. Right. Uh, DS2 hurt a lot of people. You know, not at the, <laughs> when it came out, man. It, I'm pretty sure it is the highest rated. Uh, FromSoft game in terms of um, just raw, like, Metacritic numbers. Well. Which is pretty funny. <laughs> um, yeah, it got better review scores than Dark Souls 1 and 3. I don't know if Elden Ring got, a, but I'm talking like 93, 94 out of 100 here. Jeez. Very high. Mm. Yeah, it's, you gotta think really long and hard for to, to really think of games that score that high. It's like, well, a movie, I mean, it's, a, it's like giving a movie a 9 or a 10. You gotta be like, yeah, careful the now. Thing is, you want that it's just thing? different I don't know, I'd, it's just a different mindset. Uh, when it comes to video games, a 7 is equivalent to a 5 in the movie world. Mo movies are generally rated more accurately in terms of an 8 or a 9 is special rather than normal. Um, I'm trying to wonder, is that the case with I IGN? They, they still... IGN high, right? skews big time on movies, but generally, if you're talking about like the typical kind of movie review outlets... You'll find that the scores, you even see it reflected. Metacritic has, um, you know how they've got like the red, yellow, and green colors to correspond with negative, mixed, and positive? Yeah. Uh, for video games, it is higher. The, the green is higher. So, like for movies, if you get a six, you're in the green. Whereas for a video game, I think you need to get 75 to be in the green. That's the nature of how it skews. Um, it's kind of fascinating to see that because to me, it, it just feels like the clearest indicator that that is how it works. Video games are skewed higher by review scores to where like it, it kind of makes the numbers out of 10 pointless because so few things will ever score like a two or a three that you might as well. Eliminate yeah. What's the them point of that ratings. end of the board? Yeah. You might as well rate it out of six because it starts with four. That's about as low as you could expect from the majority of our game journal outlets. We on EFAP are very familiar with the uh, one to four range. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we oh, live yeah, there yeah. Many, for many weeks at a time. We live in that realm. Uh, it shouldn't be called AI art. It should be called AI concept generator. Use it as a reference or inspiration, not as supplement for the material. Uh, I actually, well, that's the discussion, isn't it, right? Well, yeah, like, that's, that's kind of the core of it. I find it interesting as a... Um, a source of inspiration because if you jumble up a whole bunch of things it can like spark in your mind something not even that you just saw but something adjacent to it even we are like oh wait uh, a minute. the brain is weird the brain is definitely weird and it can find inspiration in uh strange and unexpected places yeah. but i mean on that comment i mean that that is the the fight that's being had right now is whether or not it is even art or uh whether mm -hmm. it should be used commercially or just for reference or not even at all uh, so you're against Cotton Gin, too? What is that? Eli Whitney's Cotton Gin? What, what is, what what is, is Cotton Gin? What is that? Cotton Gin is a machine that helps to separate wheat. Uh, the, oh, like the, the uh, white. Uh, so is the comment meant to be like, you're against industrialization or something? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I recommend checking out two clicks. Philip's video called Protect Your Art from AI. Interesting what countermeasures are being made against AI art using, uh, against AI using art without artist consent to emulate their style. That's obviously another huge war that's being had. 
That yeah. seems like one that will be perpetual. Yes. Uh, because I imagine it would be a back and forth that there'll be countermeasures and then the AI art tools will be able to get around them and then they need new countermeasures and then new tools and so on and so forth. Uh, the copy-paste download tool can steal better than AI art tools. If people are fine with the copy-paste tool existing, then they should be fine with AI. I what think a um, stupid comment. I think part of the difference people would see, especially with like sharing memes or copy and pasting, is the uh, the theft is so blatant. If it were to be called theft, uh, that everyone would be aware of it. But if you were to mash other people's work together and then present it as your own and sell it, that's where people are like, "Whoa, you've deceived me!" Because yeah, I think that's where copy... yeah. Plus, like the copy paste tool is so incredibly useful across not just writing in text but you know also images little blurbs just sharing random pieces of information when people share memes i think it's 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 basically taken at face value that you didn't make that you're spreading something that was that you usually found, and memes have become the only like time people get that you um, share praise for sharing. making a meme is when they share it and they specifically say i actually made this by the way Oh, yeah. well, I, I, or if you're thinking about something like, um, you know, those Breaking Bad, the Mario Kart Breaking Bad memes, or the, the Thanos one, where there's, like, an immense amount of effort that went into it of, like, mashing yeah. things together. In that case, um, remember, put your, yeah, put your name on that shit, so when it gets shared around, people know that you made it, you know? Put that on that, um, your YouTube, sign your work. One of Dev's ones went, like, viral as a tweet, and he, he tends to put out every so often, like, I made that one, by the way. <laughs> that, that one's <laughs> mine, I'm just saying. Um... I, I, I'm a little bit confused by the comment because I just, I don't see the, like, the connection, or, or rather, I don't, a big part of um, what everybody's sort of fighting about it is the idea of whether or not somebody can claim ownership of something that they created using AI art tools. That's a huge part of the conversation. Yeah. To which, that you can use copy and paste as a feature it has nothing to do with that. Also, where Shad also, also play DDLC Dumbos. Interesting. You'll, you'll see Shad mm. plenty of times in future, and DDLC, I mean, you know, maybe one day. Who knows? Have you guys seen Shad's videos and tweets on AI? They need to be, needs to be set straight. It's not stolen at all. Nothing has been proven that it is stolen art. I, I There's been plenty of people who have uh, responded to Shad and talked with Shad, and he's gotten debates and stuff on it, so... Yeah, I mean, we, we weren't looking for a debate episode anyway. Um... Like so, like if someone wanted us to host something like that, we've uh, it, it makes the whole audience run away to the shadows whenever the word debate is even mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm -hmm. <laughs> let, a, let alone on a fucking topic like this where everybody's I very angry. The visuals of everybody go <laughs> as they're running towards all of the shadows and the alleyways around the place, <laughs> hiding under their beds. Good morning, sleep fap. Twelve more hours today. No, no, that was see because it was soon after the um the Never Knows Best one. Remember that? Yeah, which was enormous. That Whoa. was a huge. We didn't even episode. do the whole video. We uh we we were running long time. That's right. The, the video was like two and a half hours long, so I don't think that's <laughs> it was so much to talk about. Oh, this is a chunky boy. <laughs> this this is this is a really funny super chat. It's it's funny anyway, but imagine listening to someone's like who missed the episode and for some reason comes to this exact point in the catch up. They don't know what's going on. I'm gonna read this out from start to finish. This is what the super chat says. By this logic, would he buy Hitler's Jew soap? Um, what? What? <laughs> what? What? Question of the ages. How did how did how did anyone get to the point of typing this? What what was the context? There are many watts in that watt. I, I am, I am, I don't understand at all. I can't help I mean, you on that one, but thank you. I when guess. I hear that question, I think of the two alternate realities where Hitler has become reformed and has learned to cooperate with Jews in order to make something that cleans the world together. Aww. And the other pathway is that he uses Jews' bodies to turn into so. Oh, he's got looks he like a horror film. So much. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, good. they may have been on the wrong stream, I don't know. Uh, I think they might have been on the wrong stream. On top of using the correct syntax, being hyper-specific is where the art in AI art actually is. It takes skill. The text-to-image single sentence that the average person does is how you get the same-looking stuff. What if that changed? What if in the future I only have to type, you know, um, 
awesome sci-fi movie with Harrison Ford, and it pretty much poops out Blade Runner. But like you know, oh, like, not Blade maybe, Runner. Maybe push it even further than that. What if it's just I don't know? You connect like you connect your headphones to a little jack that's in the side of your temple. And then AI is like, what do you want today? And then you just say, I don't know. And it's like, that's okay. I know because I can read your entire mind. And then it generates, you know. And then you have your tongue out going, and you're just like, yeah. (laughs) There's not even any input from you. It just knows. It can figure out your brain and then generate that. that I suppose it wouldn't even, it wouldn't even generate anything. It would just be stimulating like electrically your brain, right? In in a particular Uh, way. Well, I mean, I I guess it depends on, I mean, you could say that that's what's happening anytime that you're engaging in some way. Yeah, that's true. Right. Oh, I guess that's um, what I'm saying, I, is that instead of creating something that does that, it just does that. Um, oh yeah, I mean, that that's entirely, but it might be that some people, they need the context, and the context being, you know, I don't know, creating movies or video mm-hmm. games for you on the fly, that are uniquely tailored to your personal interests. Because um, um, all the basic image creation thing, where you type in, you know, Will Smithy and Spaghetti, like, all of them have improved, and there's no reason why they wouldn't. Keep improving. Uh, I suppose that there would still be the observation that the tool, like if you don't have, it, 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 if, if you use one of these tools and then it generates something that sucks, but you're like, oh, that's pretty good because you don't really understand anything about art. That's something that it would probably be a lot harder for these sorts of tools to overcome. It can't overcome if you just have like bad taste, right? Like if you just <laughs> yeah. don't really understand um perspective or form or or uh, any of these sort of art fundamentals so you look at a thing and you're like yeah that's good but it's not um i think that's you know? the thing though isn't it it's not being trained in such a way that it's confused it's being trained to just get better at making multiple genres mediums and markets it's it just like well, it's just it's, spreading um, out it's the nature of one of the concerning aspects of ai art in relation to human jobs is an AI generator can create a lot more images than a human can um, in the same amount of time. So even if the majority of them suck, and then by chance a few of them are good, you know, like that's that's something that's difficult for a human to compete against in the sense that you just can't take that many shots. There's only so much that you can do as a human being. Uh, I love when Rags makes Moriarty laugh. Hi, Rags. Hello. You're I wrong about jumping. I do what? plyometrics all the time. Uh, are we wrong about? Oh, the are you the one who does plyometrics all the time? All right, then, fair enough. Yeah, most most people don't jump. Most people <laughs> jumping is uh for those for those who don't know the lore on me hating <laughs> jumping. <laughs> um, uh, I I have noticed that in video games the jump function is practically ubiquitous. However, in real life, jumping is actually an extremely rare thing that you do. I can't yeah, remember the last time I've the, jumped. I can't remember the last time I jumped, personally. Oh, I certainly can't remember the last time I jumped. I just... It just doesn't seem like something I need to do that often, but, you know, it'll come up, I'm sure. Obviously, for gameplay purposes, as we've, as we've seen over the decades, jumping as a mechanic is incredibly useful, and it's very yeah. fun. It leads to a lot of different I think awesome people, gameplay features, but... I think people life, want to dig up. more into your statement than what it is. You know yep, what I mean? That's all it is. It's that, <laughs> that's it. That is basically the beginning and the end of the trying to say it's like that was observation. It. It's just people don't jump much. They don't. <laughs> yeah. You people know this is true. Jump a lot. People walk all the time. They don't jump. <laughs> uh also Fringy, favorite Halo mission. Hi Mubes. Hello. Oh, my favorite Halo mission. My favorite one in all of the, the libraries. Or, no. <laughs> no, it's Cortana. That's my favorite. Um, man, the silent cartographer is a pretty easy one to point to, but it, it kind of is like the best mission in terms of presenting Halo to a, to somebody new. This is what Halo has to offer you in the broadest sense possible. Um, it has a ton of variety. It's cool to be going around in a, a sort of like semi-open zone. It looks beautiful, even to this day. The original Xbox version still looks great. Some really great art direction. Um, but if I had to choose something other than Silent Cartographer, um, uh, I really like um, Two Storms in uh, in in Halo Three, uh, the the mission where you um, where you go to stop uh, Truth from lighting the rings. That's a fun mission. But it's funny. It's like, oh yeah, the other Silent Cartographer Esquad. Like yeah, but it has some different you know elements to it than that one. Don't forget um, the other silent cartographer-esque mission. 
from Halo 2 that everyone loves? Uh, I'm wondering if we're thinking about the same one. If if I'm or if I'm mistaking it in my mind, which one are you talking? About? Which which mission I'm, is? I'm referring to Delta Halo. I had a feeling. I you guess drop I, in with I, the ODSTs, clear yeah, out that yeah. area, move from platform to platform, go through your little vehicle section. Good stuff. Delta There's Halo, a, is Halo has really a lot cool of really direction. good levels. The thing I like about Delta Halo is how much more overgrown a lot of the uh, the forerunner stuff is compared to on the original Halo, where it's really pristine. A lot of the Forerunner structures here are like covered in vines and, and greenery. It's kind of neat. Well, there you go. Uh, replace rags with AI. Why would uh -oh. you do that? That'd be lame. Oh, that would AI be lame. AI rags. I'm. I can be just as uh, controversial and offensive as an AI can. I'll yeah. You know. Uh, you should give a criticism of Shadowverse's AI love letter by Deviant Deviant Ral a chance. It's good rad of criticism, also high rag, frong, and molly. Um, as was mentioned by rags, there's like there's like a whole fight that's been happening in terms of video responses and debates. We're not too into it at all. Um, gonna soldier on with breaking down yeah. movies and TV. The the AI debate, uh, you know, dip a toe, dip a toe nail maybe, but like. It's a bit, it's a bit hectic over there. Well, yeah, um, you dip your toe in it, and then you hear, rah, 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 rah. And like, "Oh, jeez!" <laughs> Looking wow, for on a bite, see, like, ah, oh. very angry today. Asmongold is a professional shoe connoisseur with how often he puts his foot in his mouth. Um, I mean, it's fifty-fifty to me. I feel like if, uh, if you were hyper scrutinizing every single thing we said and put it into the form of clips and sent it out. You know, and and millions of people were watching every day. We could probably get into as many controversies as him. Yeah, based on my limited exposure to Asmund Gold, he doesn't come across as nearly as oafish as someone like Hassan. Exactly, like the context of some of the things he was saying were made better by additional clips. Definitely. And so, yeah. or it's the well, opposite. I just, Hassan. It's opposite for Hassan, yeah. Like I understand his his rationale. You know, like I'm not. There are elements that I disagreed with, but like I understood it. Mm -hmm. uh, which is more than can be said for some people that we cover on EFAP, where they are completely incoherent. Yeah. About uh, 95%, yeah. So maybe that's harsh. Maybe 90. Most people literally never think about it, even if it's pointed out. Thinking. Oh no, that's terrible. And make the same purchase next time anyway. Hmm. Uh, it could be about a couple of things. It could be just general uh, consumer behavior and a lot of, especially video oh, like, game spaces. Um, but... certain industries being supported by certain products or whatever, right? Well, they're, they're making the observation that a lot of people don't get very worked up about, um, like, that, that people generally don't get worked up about the ethics of the products that they're consuming. And it's kind of complicated because, in a sense, I think everybody has at some point or another with, you know, a few things gotten really upset upon discovering the way that it's made and then made a choice not to use it. But then I guess you could say that generally there are a lot of things that people buy. People don't have time to to be thinking about essentially how every single service that facilitates their life operates. Um, people can't be thinking about how, you know, their car gets fueled or where all of their food comes from or how their clothes are made or um, just because they got, they got their own problems to deal with. Um, so I guess it's like, uh, it's complicated on whether or not, I don't, I don't like saying that people don't care just by and large about how the things that they consume are made. I think, I think yeah. it's safe to say that it's pretty obvious that people do care because you see that there are definitely changes in the way that things are made and regulations for all sorts of things from like food to, to clothing, animal testing and stuff like that. Yeah. I would say that pretty much everyone cares. They just fall onto the spectrum in different places. But I think it would take, like, legitimate psychopaths to truly not care ever. It just depends, you know, the proximity to the problem, the intensity of the problem, you know, how it Proximity would you. absolutely be an influence. Like, if every time that you used your phone, it teleported you into one of the sweatshops, you might not want to buy another, you know, phone. <laughs> like, that might actually make you go, oh, shit. Hmm. It would, it would, however, I think, really increase the average quality of the Twitter post. Because you know if you're going to make that post, you got to stare at those orphans for a bit. So make sure it's a banger. Oh, I want it. it makes you think before you tweet, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which either way, either way, positive. Mm. Uh, 
Is the pal not entitled to the sweat of its own brow? No, says the child slave driver with a gun. Is the pal not entitled <laughs> to the sweat of its own brow? Pal oh, world, no. Um, I guess one of the, the, the advantages, semi-advantages, I guess incidental advantages, we'll call it, to having a, a, a bit of a delay between the um, episode going out and us reading the Super Chats is that we sort of have some extra time to see how things yeah. settle and progress. And I think in the sense of Pal World, I, have, I haven't heard the numbers, but I haven't heard anyone talking about it in quite oh, a while Culturally now. disappeared, yeah. Uh, Helldivers is the new meme. Helldivers I would even say name. Helldivers is uh, calming down, you know? And who knows, it's by the time, this, by time this episode goes out, maybe Helldivers has not even been spoken about for however long. <laughs> mm. <laughs> maybe, maybe, but... I'm still talking about it, and I'm still playing it. Yeah. So we'll see how uh, we'll see how it goes. As far as I know, they're already well. You know, they're, they're on that note, a good update schedule on it. I played a game on my own uh, yesterday, and it I uh I, did they fix the charges where a rocket I fired one rocket in its head and it died. Yes, there was a recent patch I think two days ago that uh made their made their heads like a weak point for armor. Uh, as a weak point as armor, so you can hit them with like the Eat 17 or the recoilless rifle, and it will kill them, because they said that the the leg meta for chargers was not intended. Uh, but instead of they didn't remove the leg meta. Instead, they said you know if you shoot it in the face with a rocket, it will die. Um, and there's less armor in general now from the bugs. However, other spawns have been increased to compensate for that. And one thing that I have noticed after playing after this patch is that games have the potential to be miserable if you get a whole bunch of the spewers out on the field because they are um, they're awful and I hate them. And I want them to burn in hell for mm -hmm, eternity. Mm -hmm. uh, chargers are annoying, Bile Titans are annoying and awful and all that. But man, when you've got a whole bunch of spewers after you and they shoot the acid and they mortar from a distance... Ooh, it could be really bad. So, I think everyone who plays that game needs to understand that avoiding patrols and killing them before they can bring in reinforcements is a huge key to not having a, a long and very difficult mission. Um, but yeah, I was just having a look, and Pal Will's numbers do just seem to be going down. Down, down, down. Which I yeah, think I is think normal to some back. extent. It's just... Uh, I was not surprised for, um, at all. Normal for basically every game, yeah. I'd say. Yeah, but uh, we'll see see how it goes over time because it was uh, embroiled within this whole discussion was Pal World. But uh, come to think of it, I don't know if I heard the term Pal World since this uh, episode. You know? No, no, no. I haven't myself. I stopped playing Blizzard games after the Hong Kong fiasco. Different strokes for different folks. Yeah, I think that's totally that's fair. fair. That's what that's what got a lot of people to be like, "Oh shit, damn." Has anybody ever eaten baby cow? Well, that's Probably. exactly. That's I don't think so, though. Right. Well, there's that's definitely people who have. Uh, lamb, have, right? uh, have any of us three done it? I don't think so. That I don't think me. I have. Maybe I, I have, I've had but veal, I don't think no. so. I don't think I've had veal or whatever the term is for baby cow. I think it's veal. The reason why it's still all South across Park the board. Episode, the South Park episode was about uh about that. I got reminded of a Simpsons one. Do you want to go first for your reference or? <laughs> Oh, uh, well, the South Park it. episode was exactly that. It was just that um, the, the kids uh, went to a farm and they saw that veal was like baby cows that were tied up that weren't, you know, walking around. Uh, and that made Stan particularly upset. And so he tried to save them. But then he started, like, growing vaginas all over his face um, <laughs> because he was turning into a pussy. <laughs> was, was like in the universe um i can't remember the resolution of the uh i can't remember what the resolution of the the story was though but i know what one you're thinking about you're thinking about the least of the vegetarian no it's in scratchy land oh uh wait which uh which reference specifically it's when uh bart orders like the, the brains on toast or something and homer orders the like you know like the heart stew, and Marge is like, what are you guys doing? And he's like, oh, they have crazy names for everything here. And then Marge goes, oh, okay, I'll have the baby guts. And then the, the guy's like, you disgust me. And Bob <laughs> just goes, Bob, that's veal. And she goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> was it Heinlein who said, I forget who it was, but um, I think it was him who said that if you eat meat, you should probably 
kill and butcher an animal at least once, just so that you have some kind of understanding as to where it came from and what has to happen for you to enjoy that, you know, enjoy essentially the, this animal that you're consuming when you're Not so normally idea. far away from the process. And there's, there's definitely something to that. Um, there is like that little, that little reminder in your head of this all has to come from somewhere. And it is, in a way, it's, a, it's kind of a blessing that in modern life you can be so far removed from these things and at the same time probably important that you engage with it to have some perspective. Yeah, you can extrapolate that to many aspects of modern living. I feel uh, that we, we often sort of forget, like, man, going to, like, a supermarket and just having basically any food item that you could possibly want there at your convenience that you can then take home and put in a fridge or a refrigerator to have it last for days or even much longer than that. Um, like, this, this is for crazy, years, really. Yeah. yeah, this is kind of crazy. You know, only, like, 300 years ago. That was not the way that it was. Even a hundred years ago, that wasn't the way it was. Yep. Remember, I mean, you can you can talk to your grandparents, and they'll tell you about the milkman. And maybe <laughs> if you have right. really old relatives, they could tell you about you know ice boxes and things like that. It's and then um, but you got to be right careful now. with the milkman because of South Park established. You know, people people got content with somebody delivering some milk to their house, but then they didn't know that the milkman was fucking their wife. <laughs> And, and now you got your Amazon, and the, the milkman's the come back. The glint in the milkman's eye. <laughs> then they all dressed up as Bane to stop the UPS man. The best part about... A man's wife! Is his wife, UPS man! Anyway. The best part about AI is not having to speak to Twitter artists. The only metric that should matter is how fun or funny the content is. I, mean, I, I don't even think you'd agree with that. I don't think you would agree with that. The only metric, no. Um, if you're trying to have a commentary on, like, what ends up mattering the most, it's like, yeah, you could throw a few more words in there. Like, how inspiring, or how gorgeous, how fun, how entertaining. These things might be one of the bigger factors, but there's always other metrics, as we went over, that, that come in. Sometimes when you least expect it. Yeah, certainly be wary to take that ultimate ends justify the means sort of approach to the creation mm -hmm. aspect of the things in your life that you enjoy. Especially uh, from the Especially from the, um, if you're taking this from the point of view of someone who is just the consumer, not to belittle it, but just to say, you're the one who ultimately, you, you just get the final product. You don't have to do any of the work yourself. So that's where your perspective comes from. And don't forget that. Uh, the best part about AI is not, oh wait, sorry, I read that. Stopping in for an interesting AI example. Production teams use collages of images for inspiration, so some people I know have been using AI to generate more specific images that don't even exist. Thoughts? So, you're talking about, like, you could have all of the most famous fantasy, you know, creatures on a wall from all different kinds of artwork to inspire you to create your own, and you're saying, like, well, what if we just had an equivalent of that where you have a screen that's presenting an AI image that you've typed in a bunch of words and you keep refreshing until you find something that kind of I don't know, gives you the right inspiration to create your own thing. I mean, it's, uh, these, are, these are the sort of factors and tiers of using the technology that I think everyone has lots of different opinions on in terms of whether or not it's ethical and where does it come from, and then how different is it from formats we already use? Because, I mean, it's been decades of using AI, so to speak, in the creation of all kinds of artwork. It's just that now it's become a lot more consumer grade, I guess you could call it, and it regards things that are complete works rather than pieces of works. I think that might be, yeah, that, that would probably explain it because you can think about a whole bunch of like simulation tools and things like that that have been used in animated films or like visual effects work for live action films. Yeah, um, it's no but, longer a part of the process or a tool used in a much bigger process. Now it has become just the thing in and of itself, and it and begins and ends with what it is. Yes, ma'am. Yo, Mola, since you talked about doing a Godzilla Kong arc in the future, I emailed you a sort of guide to the Monsterverse films. Hope you got it and that it proves useful. I will uh, go looking for it once we maybe put things in motion for that. The, the thing about it will be that we have to figure out between Godzilla and King Kong what movies we will be covering in total. We will need to have it limited at some point, you know? I'll just go do them all. Mm. So it's like, so which ones? Like, probably the original for both. But then from there, I'm not actually sure. <laughs> like, in terms of exactly which ones we'll cover. Because everyone's going to want us to cover the fucking Roland Emmerich one. Like, you know, come on. Oh, yeah. Um, 
when I was watching Dune 2, when I was at the theater, they showed the trailer for the new Godzilla uh -huh. King Kong movie, and I was, I was just like, man, this looks yeah. like such shit. Have yeah. you seen the I, clip where, uh, uh, you know how you see the floopy run of Godzilla? There's, there's, there's a part where I, King Kong jumps on Godzilla's back and like rides him mm. as they're, they're like riding into battle. This, no. Which I don't even see how that's beneficial if you're about as big as each other. Wouldn't that just like completely weigh Godzilla down? Do you know and how make him move slower? King of the Monsters is a goober film, but that one is being like embarrassed by the new ones. You know what I mean? In terms of, uh... I thought we were like epic and. We have choir and, and, and it's dark and there's lots of danger of death, but like the new ones are just like, woohoo, gooby goobas, let's run around. Ah. Well, yeah, I, I don't want to see Godzilla run. Uh, I don't want to see that. <laughs> I really don't want to see him run. Well, Three, like, don't you last, know that uh... there's, there's running of him in the classic ones? So you're shitting on the classic ones now, are you? This is, I mean, that's an interesting argument that I presume some people have actually made. The, the the conversation about Godzilla has gotten very difficult from what I'm gathering because it's stepping on communities that have existed for a very, very long time who've decided that a lot of stuff to do with Godzilla is totally fine. That was, I, uh, I know that it's something that I found, I have found it fascinating in, in relation to Godzilla Minus One is, um, to me, the view that Godzilla Minus One is the ideal Godzilla film and that Godzilla King of the Monsters, many people said... And I know that they've forgotten it, that that was, the, like, ideal. That's what they wanted from Godzilla. That's irreconcilable. They are fundamentally presenting, like, different interpretations of Godzilla. Obviously, I think one of them is dramatically better than the other one. But I find it funny that these two positions can sort of be held simultaneously. Well, and it's sad that they're both considered to have human drama. Is like, yeah, uh, I guess so. But there's one that does it correctly. One of them has real compelling human drama. The other one's retarded. Mm -hmm. So... You see um, it really reminds there. me of Man of Steel. Do you remember when we we had our foray into the DC world? Just like people were like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Like you, you just shout all over Man of Steel. It's like, yeah, we did. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's a really bad movie. Film. It's uh, you know, I'm Wonder Woman, right? These these this was a bit bold Wonder of us Woman. in terms of the general that, takes yeah. on these no, movies, yeah, where they were pretty good. Changed now, now, yes. and now everybody mm. views all of them as terrible, which is really they funny. They all come <laughs> around eventually. Well, Wonder Woman has some some reputation left, but I, I still think that if people really watch that fucking No Man, if that No Man's Land scene came out today, do you think people would be still okay with it? No, yeah. people would be making. I think fun people of it. would be fucking um, furious with it. I don't even think they would just dislike it or make fun of it. I think they would be like, "This is disgusting." Uh, I mean, it is really awkward. Like, oh yeah, you humans with your mortality. Let me just go out there and just win because I'm super powered. Like yeah. it's it's almost like hmm, this is weirdly judgmental. <laughs> like, well, it's just the it's... the direct comparison should be with Captain America, who's fighting alongside and is 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 killable you know what i mean oh, yeah and helping mortal, his yeah. fellow soldiers Gunshot and his soldiers help him but like with wonder woman wasn't she like come on let's go over to no man's land yeah. then he's like and, what and the then, fuck uh, are you talking about <laughs> like, what? yeah and then she and then she smugly is like well no I, i'm gonna do it and then the slow motion of her walking across it's it's so embarrassing mm. no they didn't play that music there it was much more generic <laughs> Annihilates the German conscript. No, that was before the yeah, uh, yeah. Again, it's like World War One. Like, okay, I mean, all mm. right. I like partly agree with Asman. Like the part about customers not really caring about the behind the scenes of the games. If the game is good, we play. I I just don't think it's binary. Like either they care or they don't. I feel like with everybody, you'll care about different things the more knowledge you are on the things, and the only way that you get to be knowledgeable about them is people fucking flagging them down, or up, I guess. Pretty much. I mean, how did crunch become a big uh, yeah. conversation? That's a huge if talking point when it's existed probably forever, right? With all artistic industries. It's, yeah, basically, and especially in video games, it's always been... I mean, it's, you know, it's it's known... Like, um, people don't Smash care until they do. It's crunch, Halo 2. Yeah, just went... But, Sometimes it's a matter of people just aren't aware of it, and then once they're made aware of it, and if they decide to look more into it, they realize, oh, huh, okay, wow, I didn't know any of this, you know? Back-to-back -back streams? You're too kind, long man. Hey, don't forget the Fringo and the Rango. They, they, they were there for the whole thing, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they survived. Can't wait to see what cringy takes we see today. Well, it was like a 50-50 mix thing. We ended up uh, agreeing, disagreeing. We had lots of takes from all kinds of people as well. We had the whole Twitter section. Mm -hmm. 
with my friend <coughs> reading it all out. <laughs> if it's revealed that the MCU film uses AI to make their films, can we then dismiss their rights of being considered cinema, please? Well, I mean, it's always going to be cinema. Well, not to but... mention there's AI in like Pixar movies. Do you do you want to consider Incredibles and Monsters Inc. not art? Like, <laughs> I mean, I suppose that's that's one of the more difficult questions, isn't it? If they were, if those kinds of movies were built from the ground up from just an AI with the prompt good movie, what does that do wow. to you? What do you think? I mean, I guess what I find interesting is the uh, the notion, uh, you know, like instead of simulating Sully's fur, should somebody have individually animated each of those individual? And when I say somebody, I mean many people, because it yeah. would have taken many people to do it individually animate. A movie or you know, like have released, the, it wouldn't have come out. Well, they wouldn't have finished. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That, those are kind of interesting examples because you could get a bunch of people to do it, but that starts to actually be beyond, like, feasibility. Yeah, and that would also be in service to just one tiny little su component. superficial element of that entire movie. Thank you. For the where they, they wouldn't make them, make them like that. If, if that was what the process entailed, then you literally would not I mean, have... You never would have had that character. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uploading two longmans on the one weekend. I have a 12-hour flight. Here's to save travels for anybody who's on the road slash in the air today. Absolutely. Oh, all right. Yeah, that'll get you covered. Uh, it's funny to me to see how the AI argument hinges on whether or not you care about human input or if you want to rely on heuristic algorithms. Humans experience things that translate into art. AI doesn't have that. AI doesn't have that to create. It would, it would be dependent on your definitions, right? And that's what the whole discussion's about. Well, yeah, because then you start, you have to start delving into those conversations about the nature of human consciousness and whether you think that there's, you know, we're just uh, biological robots or if there's something, something like some special spark or, you know, th those sorts of conversations. Mm -hmm. I think that, that was one of the things I, we talked about during the stream. You got you to remember that, that a lot of what will be tethered to the arguments that are happening right now, the very specific examples of AI art or people talking about specific software, um, a lot of that's going to be tangled together with some pretty fundamental, like philosophical disagreements, um, that are not the kind of things that we're ever really going to resolve. I don't think that's always going to be a permanent discussion, but it's worth remembering that that's going to be tied up in it. Well, something that, uh, struck me while I was doing Stargrift, right? was like, you have the people who, uh, I assume I'd be speaking for you two as well as myself, but I know I'm speaking for Nerd Rodigan as, the fans of Star Wars who are so entrenched and beloved like the OT, that their perception of the Force doesn't go too far outside of what they see in the OT, and I don't mean that in the sense that anything you see outside of the OT just can't happen, it's like, no, anything that is within the bounds of what is set by the OT. That's like, mm -hmm. their perception of the Force, how it's used, and that it's a a philosophical thing in a lot of ways, as opposed to like a hard magic system that is going to be dependent on for like everything throughout the universe or something. Not that it isn't that at all. I just I'm trying to paint a broad picture, and um, so you have that, and then you have like the people in the prequel TCW sort of edge of things, Force Force Unleashed, where it's like there can be powers that go far and wide and are insane and can do all kinds of awesome spectacular things and then there are people of like another faction who just say it's unlimited like there's just nothing you can't do with it in the right circumstances and i guess what i'm the reason i'm bringing this up is that when people refer to the force all of that background isn't necessarily even prompted from anybody and yet everyone will have to have the conversation on the same level right it's like is this character doing a thing that matches what you perceive as a thing and then like two people agree one person doesn't and the two people who agree don't even agree for the same reasons and that nobody even knows this sort of stuff it's all background information and experience that isn't overt and so then like a lot of disagreements will happen without you even realizing why because everyone's got different definitions and, and all that and i was just thinking when it comes to the conversation about star wars super simple and you can sort of sort those things out eventually because you'll figure out where the differences are in the people but blow that up to an ai discussion on the very concept of creation, art, and human consciousness, and input, and it's just like, I don't even, we have billions, potentially, of people talking about this, and, and, and like, no wonder we'll never f fucking figure this out, because everybody's, you, you, nobody knows what everyone's experience and understanding of all these words even are, and everyone, they're all getting thrown around all over the place. It's you a, imagine it like, uh, the iceberg typically is, what, ten times larger under the surface? Here, it's, it's more like it's a hundred times larger under the surface. 
there is so much that is informing just the discussions about like specific AI tools or specific examples with yeah, a like lack if, of recognition that so much of it is tied up in really fundamental questions about existence. Another way to put it might be that when someone says the force, I think of like Vader using it in the OT, Oda, Oda, Yoda using it in the OT, that sort of thing. And then someone else might be thinking of characters I've never even seen using it. And then someone else might be thinking of Ray using it. Like immediately, like they're picturing these things in their head. The equivalent with AI could be like someone says AI, and someone immediately pictures like that. Some of those meme images, right, with a brain that's all like code. Someone else pictures a mm -hmm. Terminator. Someone else pictures like Glados, and you're just like, yeah. Someone else pictures Wally. Yeah, there's all these different biases that come in immediately, and it's just like, God, our language can be very ineffective and inefficient, I guess. But I mean, you know, what is it going to do? Like, <laughs> it's uh, we can't we can't reverse mind read, right, rags. That is correct. We Except try, we though. can. Well, we try. We we only have our words, and our words are dependent on what That's we understand like about them. That's kind of like reverse mind reading. Yeah, but like it's really inefficient, or at least it's not as efficient as it could very well be. Maybe we'll get there one day with um, AI. I guess. I guess it depends <laughs> on your frame of reference, because I can buy the arguments for both how incredibly efficient it is, and also how it isn't efficient at all. I think there's an argument to be made for. Oh yeah, like when sides, we but it sort before of we had that. It. When it came in, that would have been a huge leap, right? Like communication yeah, to that level. Because I mean, if you if you think about it, the uh, what's a good way to describe it? I guess language is so intrinsically a part of our our experience as civilized humans to where it is just something we don't even think about. It's so tied into our daily lives, our experiences, even our thoughts. The languages that you learn impacts the way that you think about concepts. For instance, you can ask uh, Metal when he's, uh, when he's around, uh, what language does he think in? You know, if, if you're... I think we had you're, a... You're I think you did switch, you said, to English, right? I think it's some... That does sound sort of familiar. Like, a long time we had, a, we had talked about it, but to the point where, yeah, learning different languages changes your internal monologue language. Um... There's a lot to be said about... I mean, wasn't it Metal Gear Solid Five that started with that quote about how it's um, it, a language is like what we're really sort of tied to more than nations or something like that? It's Language is just... It's, it's such a deep, practically intrinsic part of the human experience and the way that we communicate in much the same way that... For instance, sight. Uh, sight is the most important sense to human beings to the point where we use the word see as a stand-in for the concept of understanding things at all. If someone tells you something, you'll say, oh, I see, I see. Because knowing and the acquisition of information is so tied to being able to use your eyeballs and see things that we use that word as a stand-in for the concept of understanding information. Uh, to grasp a concept is to see the concept. Um, and you were talking about the importance of language. I mean, that's what 1984 was about. You know, the, the, the idea that when you remove certain words from a language, you begin to remove concepts from people. The more that you reduce language, the more that it, it just makes it so that it's, it's more difficult to even think uh, in, in novel ways. Yeah, Th there's not a word for a thing, thing, then, yeah. Yeah, how do you understand the concept? To con and, yeah, and, and certainly it makes it harder to spread it, too. Yeah. If you have an idea that's outside of newspeak, that's outside of the, you know, party approved words, even if you understand it, which you probably will, but it'll be difficult for you to it will just be it will be difficult for you to spread that to someone else because there's just not a word for it. One the thing people also forget about AI is when AI uh, when art is made with passion and care by an artist and then people think and says it's AI art, wild world, wild world. There's a lot of weird sentence structure there but um yeah the the nature of an artist trying to create what looks like something that was made by ai you know and then they're successful it's like well yeah yeah it gets weird it's like if a human being if uh it's human being i was about to make a weird dichotomy it's like if an adult was trying to um mimic a child's crayon drawing yeah you know and then they're like oh this isn't very good it's just it was this isn't very good at all. It was clearly made by a child. And then the man steps out from behind the curtain and you're like, aha, you fool, you've played right into my trap. Uh, <laughs> that was actually me. I, yeah, that was actually me. It was me the whole time. Turns out I was, uh, it was, it was, I fooled you.
Uh, Asman's point is that the opinions of artists do not factor into the customer's decision, consumer's decision to buy a product. That is wrong. And he wrong. Oh. Um, you have to not like if someone said um, no. He just means most of the time. It's like say most of the time when you're going to make a, a, a point that broad, yeah. that sweeping. We just had a little super chat talking about language. The whole point of language is to avoid this element of me trying to interpret what the fuck you mean. I remember um, we, a criticism we had on that episode. Some people were saying, like, I love how EFAB don't apply this standard to themselves. They'll say, like, oh, Disney content is just shit. And then they'll say, like, oh, no, no not, not all of it, though. And I was like, yeah, don't we do that, though? Often and loudly. We often clarify. We yeah. often say. Uh, like, in fact, I often when we say all the Marvel stuff is shit, we often feel compelled to say, well, except Spider-Man. <laughs> Like, yeah, and, and there's noteworthy elements, like the box That's office of Guardians, or uh, Endgame should be considered, like, the downfall, not later than that, necessarily, or... Like, there's all these different little things we like to mention. Yes, it well, makes the episodes longer, but I mean, you, why not? Are you going to be worse off for being more precise? What, when is it ever worse to be more precise? Um... And I'll be honest with you as well, if Rags, like, suddenly announced, you know what, all of Disney's content is shit, and then someone said the Super Chat saying, you said all of it was shit, and if he said, I didn't mean all of it, I'd be like, yeah, but you said all of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, hmm. You could definitely use context clues to know, but the thing is, the another, another thing that's important here is that uh, it depends on what's being discussed, right? If someone says the fall of Disney, it's loss of money, it's this, it's that, and then Rags says, well, I mean, all their fucking content has been shit. And then someone says, well, Andor's, Andor's not shit. And you're like, no, no, I'm saying, like, I'm saying the vast majority has been shit to explain why, why the downfall is there. And um, the, the point about the consumer's point of view about artist input is incredibly important to this discussion. Because we're basically saying, like, artists shut up about AI because it doesn't matter. But it absolutely does, and it has changed the industry. Like, the artwork being shit from Disney is, is a direct explainer for why they're falling apart. Asmund Gold's saying that people don't care about artists' opinions when they buy stuff as an explanation for, like, the success of Pal World. I, I, I think there's so many contradictions in there uh, uh, and some of the stuff that you have to consider. If he was to then say, no, I, I, I know some people do. We're like, yeah, but some people becomes loads of people the second that it, it's an issue that's super important. And we only know when people make more noise about it. That's just how it works. We went over this on the stream. And also, as... Um, there, there's, there's obviously a very clear utilitarian purpose to language and how we express concepts. However, there is also a very uh, clear artistic and style, uh, stylized element to language that I wouldn't want to miss. I don't want to lose concepts of like hyperbole and you know exaggeration and things of that nature uh, just for the sake of always being precise. But usually, if you're going to make a very important point relative to a conversation that you're having... Probably good for you to say what you really mean so there's no confusion, or to stress very much so that you're about to make some sort of a thesis statement. Besides, because, yeah, I, I am interested in the point that an artist's opinion on their work never decided whether or not the consumer base is going to be buying their product. That's an interesting idea. Wouldn't dismiss it out of hand. It's just that we start thinking about like historical examples and then, you know, pragmatically how it works and just, uh, and then theoretical. Like, uh, if, I don't know, fuck it, how much of a difference do you think it would make if Scorsese said he watched Batman, Superman? I was about to say Superman Legacy is renamed now. But if he watched it and said it was absolutely incredible, like, I feel, I feel like that would make an impact, uh, with, with the film community. You know, they'd be like, Scorsese said it? Oh my god. You gotta go check it out. But vice versa, if he said it was absolutely shit and completely confirmed all of his opinions on superhero movies being, uh, I don't know, roller coaster rides, I think that would make an impact as well. And that's not even about uh, ethics. That's just his opinion of the quality. If uh, Scorsese said, did you know the Superman legacy, or whatever it ends up being called, if it's just Superman, was made with baby blood, I feel like uh, that would also have a huge impact. Yep. <coughs> Question. You are each immune to copyright and... Sorry, you're each immune to copyright or any product project that you decide to work on completes instantly. Well, like, what would we want to make if it? So, like, if it was a oh, they're saying film based on something that exists, basically. I guess they're saying the latter. Yeah, would you rather be immune to copyright or any project you decide to work on completes instantly? Well, hmm. Well, if uh, I had the latter, the... then it means it robs me of like any yeah, that's of the, the fun thing. actually creating something. So I yeah. definitely don't. 
completes uh, instantly. No, I wouldn't complete instantly. If it was like some, if it's, it was, yeah, if it was something along the lines of stay motivated, um, you know, no weird, no bizarre technical issues that stops you from doing it, then yeah, but I mean, the first yeah, I guess pretty because cool, the process immune to copyright, is, you know, <laughs> yeah, that would be really good, yeah, because that I would just, be one I less obstacle. So much. Yeah, because I, 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 I would run it. Creative process. I would run it as ethically as possible in terms of you know what I believe is fair. Yeah, but I don't at the want same to steal time, stuff. You know, when when I need a minute of a of a piece of footage, I'm like, you know what, I f I feel I'm justified this time, and I don't have to worry about copyright. So there we are. Yeah. Basically, the first option is, what if the law just was like followed? <laughs> that would be, be nice. <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, people still went to restaurants in track because repli replicator food is the same every time. People see the Mona Lisa to look at its details up close. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. That if we had the ability to do everything in an easier and faster way, that it like stops anyone from wanting to do it in other ways. Yeah, I mean, we know that this isn't the case. Sometimes people still do things in a, I guess, what you could call a slower, more manual fashion because they enjoy it. If the Louvre Mona Lisa was fake, the Islesworth or Illsworth uh, Mona Lisa would become more valuable, being the last Mona Lisa painted by da Vinci. Yeah, I'd imagine so. Mm, yeah, probably. I assume that's to prove the value of art can very much be just tied to its scarcity slash cultural uh, relevance. Yeah, which, which is no oh, disagreement yeah. here. Absolutely. If... Um... You have a, a prolific artist who made a million very similar things, then each one wouldn't quite be as valuable. And that's what happens a lot with artists. They do, you know, the same thing. A lot of hand painted or handmade knives, handmade cutlery, handmade this, that pottery. There is an element of if there's if they're doing it all the time, every day, all day, maybe to the point where it's almost like a human assembly line. There's something that's kind of lost in that. Does a Christmas present have value? Why don't you buy yourself? I think they're, they're pointing out the, the value. That's the thought that counts, right? That's the thing. It's when someone's giving you a thing. What that means. Doesn't matter what the thing is sometimes. Uh, in a way, yeah. But it's almost uh, sort of tied to that similarly. Is If the thought is really good, then it's very often that that means that the present itself will be more impactful or meaningful. Because the thought is often going to lead someone to making a a, a gift idea that's very yeah meaningful yeah they intertwine. To that In yeah. the same vein, uh, the more and more money they provide, someone could be like, "Well, that's not very that doesn't change their thoughtfulness, does it?" And it's like, "Well, in a way, it does. It's how much money they were willing to give you, right? Uh, or how much they want to. One can read into that, and that's not even like a a you know like a, a thing they made or a thing they bought knowing your interest. They just gave you money, but it, it all has play in terms of what a thing will mean. Yeah, really? a lot of the times it's just an element of I don't know what to get you and you don't really know what you want, so here's some money, spend it on whatever, and I'm here, you know, we're having cake and hanging out and just talking, and that's, uh, you know, that's A-OK. -okay. Not there... every gift has to be a silver Game Boy Advance SP with Sword of Mana. Yeah. But, hey. Something to think uh, about. I really love the stream. Could you cover Just Right's video on subjectivity? We have. Like four years ago. I think. The uh, subjectivity think so. is Unless implied. He did, video, uh, right? Round two. Wait, I thought subjectivity was implied was uh um isn't that uh Joseph Anderson? Oh wait, yeah, you're right. Did we do Just Right's video on subjectivity? Just Right did the TLJ one, didn't it? I think we did. That's his the one too. where you had the big conversation and stuff. Oh, that was covered on was that on EFA? Was that that was on just Wolf's stream? I think wasn't it? Unless that was just a TLJ video. That doesn't pop up much anymore. I, or maybe it's more like phases. The whole uh, subjectivity objectivity discussion. It hasn't really happened in a while. I haven't really seen it because that it's usually brought up as a a passing comment in like a Reddit post or something like that. Some people think they could be subjective with our da da da, but people don't seem to really get deep into that discussion or at least they haven't lately maybe it just sort of comes and goes sometimes it's in vogue and sometimes not so much yeah i can't remember it's been a while that or not. Really the audience will have to let me know on that one i think i genuinely can't remember but it does exist um 
Bum, bum, bum. Have you seen the Ragnarok season three finale? If so, what did you think? I have not. I assume you guys haven't either. I haven't. Rag no. Ragnarok? I don't know if that. No. Mm -hmm. Is that a uh, show? I guess so. If it's got seasons, no. but no clue. If all recordings of music were destroyed overnight and no one made any more, would people go back to playing music themselves like they used to? Yes. I think so. There would be a dramatic increase of people creating music if there was no yep. music. The desire for music would, especially if it just happened overnight and it wasn't a slow decline of people wanting music, which seems really unlikely, but I guess is technically possible. But yeah, people would want to hear music. There would be a lot more people getting together, getting instruments making music, going to concerts, that need would, would, would be filled in alternative ways. People would, people would start doing a lot of singing. People used to sing a lot more than they do now. Yeah. Because anyone can sing. You know, it's, it's, it's your built-in instrument. So it was, very, um, it was very big. It was both a... It was just a lot more commonplace for people to do singing. Muller, I think you'll find it amusing to hear that Asmongold is a big fan of your Dark Souls 2 video series. I've heard, I know. Uh, I'm glad he enjoyed it. The librarian at my high school always used to cry about Google and Wikipedia because folks didn't have to read books for all their research. Is it really those websites' fault that she couldn't get kids to see her values? I mean, that was a transitionary period, right, of understanding it what the fuck it even period. was. Yes. Don't um, use Wikipedia as a source... For your paper and your book report, if I see Wikipedia as a source, it's not going to count. But they didn't know that all of the things that Wikipedia says has the sources at the bottom of the page, and so you would just write those instead of the yeah. Wikipedia link. Well, because <laughs> what was you funny know, when because um, this transitionary period, they didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. The best thing was when people had essays printed and there was footnotes in the printed pages, and it was like, wait, what is this? And you're like, oh, weird. I don't, I don't know why that's there. As in like Wikipedia footnotes, you know, like the. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they did that with they did that on Batwoman. Remember? Yes, they did. God, that's fucking lazy, man. But yeah, whatever. You guys should absolutely talk to Asmin if possible. It would be a great stream for sure. He is welcome on EFAP. Yeah, he we'll chat with him about uh most things. Are we human or are we dancers? I remember that song. Let's celebrate. Oh wait, that's the wrong one. Uh, where? What would be the difference between a psychopath and a synth? Both don't feel emotions the same way as normal people do. No, psychopaths literally cannot feel certain emotions, and like imp I think empathy. Psychopaths cannot empathize with other people. Um, I think that's what makes a psychopath. Like it's a it's a literal brain like disability. Essentially, they cannot feel that emotion. Um, Chronic mental disorder since, with abnormal or violent social behavior. That's a psychopath. Uh, seems and about right. maybe, maybe I'm confusing it with a sociopath. I often probably get those confused. But oh. there is also the element of it depends what kind of synthetic person you're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, some synths are very human in the way that their emotions are. Sometimes even more human. More human than human, right? That's right. Anti-AI say AI is bad because it is soulless, but forget that Jackson Pollock exists. Wow. True. That's mean. No, Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock, he splattered that paint like a real Good human. old Polly boy. Know. He knew what he was up You're, to. Listen, I'm, I, I don't give a shit about Jackson Pollock, man. <laughs> uh, just don't give a fuck. <laughs> if, but it's art. It's undeniably art. It's his experience or whatever, putting stuff on that canvas. Boy. And I've heard that, oh, those canvases were big. So they sure that's were. The they sure Boy, were. were those canvases. That was a lot of paint. My take as a musician, the scenarios are the same. You tell an artist what to make. You tell an AI what to make. Your ability to communicate your needs based on your experience slash knowledge of the medium is the only gold star here, creatively speaking. Nothing to scoff at, don't get me wrong. A problem is equating the skill set to the work itself. They're two different things. Now, if we can all agree to just call all artists tools, then my view falls apart. Slightly off topic, sorry, take care. Yeah, uh, someone... I assume I that... Go for it. Someone who's commissioned a lot of artwork over the years, because I'm no artist myself in this sense, 
if you tell if you tell the same description of what you want to different artists, the reason you will get wildly different things comes down to their musculature, where they're from, and the cultural impact of where they're from, their personal their personal preferences and their styles and all that stuff very deeply relating to who they are as a human being. And I don't think that's the same as just considering them a tool that just spits out things based on your description. Um, especially when you are in a somewhat collaborative process with this artist and you're telling them, well, why did you make it like this? I did it this because I, I like the way that this looks over here and I like the colors and I think there's good contrast here and there. And I think because I'm trying to, you know, invoke some sense of style from something that I really liked as a kid or something like that. And it's, I don't think that it's, it's quite the same as just saying that, you know, they're tools or anything like that. Okay, so th the impression that I got from the comment is, is kind of like an interesting thought, which is um, that you could imagine that somebody, I, I feel like a, a more straightforward one would be, you could imagine somebody who's got like a really good grasp on the English language. They're good at writing things down and writing things down that are grammatically correct, um, dynamic. It's, it's just like good writing, but the whatever, what's being expressed in the text itself, the meaning is kind of hollow and vacuous or just not that interesting or bland as like there, there can be in some sense being really good at the technical skill doesn't necessarily mean that the stuff that you're creating is also good. It could be great or good, but it could also be like, eh, you know, I would agree that, that, that um, this... assuming that you have the technical skill that you are good at writing words on the page doesn't mean that you're going to be able to write a great novel necessarily. Just because you're good at putting the words down doesn't mean that um, what they actually amount to is particularly interesting. Yeah, uh, this happens in when, I don't know, to toot my own horn a little bit, but uh, I took like a good nine or so years of piano and my brother also did piano lessons and I think I'm a better piano player than him, but that's uh, alternative to the point. But I think it's because if you play the notes perfectly, when you sit down at the piano and you play the notes perfectly and on time and you do it as the as the page specifically tells you to do, it can absolutely feel very mechanical and impersonal. Whereas if you lean into an element of what you think feels right, what seems in context to be really good ways to make those notes flow with each other and the way that your hand can hit the keys in a particular um in a, with a particular weight that you could have two people play a piece and have it sound you know obviously very similar because it's the same piece but it will sound very different as well uh and i think this that's sort of the same concept of yeah you could you could you know you what are those little roller players of the um the, the the machines where you have like a a, a roll of paper and it yeah, goes yeah. I don't the machine that on the piano. I don't, I don't know um, what they're called like player pianos i think they're called and they are just it's going to sound the exact same every single time because it's a purely mechanical process that is just clanging things in tandem with holes in paper or however that works uh whereas if you have multiple people playing it then it's just gonna it's just gonna sound different and it might sound different based off of their mood and how they're feeling at that given point or something that they heard and are trying to incorporate into their own style. So, but, yeah, I like to think there's a bit more to it than just just doing the thing as it's written down, and that's it. Well, on that note, opinions are like assholes. Mine is right. Yeah, that's fair. Well, like a, it a should, right It angle? should be in the middle. That's strange. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Asmund's conflating value and utility. They mean different things. Man, the word, the words, <laughs> like the words. He was not words very good at so many yeah. things. Yeah. Even he was... what you said could mean many different things. Well, I mean, th this whole thing, like it breaks down into this enormous web of just words that all mean different things to everybody. Uh, but a lot of it is said with such brazen statements that. Funnily enough, like I said, you could have thousands of people agreeing and they all actually disagree. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, like they agree with the statement, but they all think it means different things. Yeah. Well, we, no, we'd I, have the inverse of this when we talked about movies. A lot of people would be like, no, you guys are wrong about this movie. You're wrong about this movie. And then they would all be disagreeing with each other. Oh, I remember well, as that. As they disagreed yeah. with us. 
That's a fun like, one. Like, you're wrong for this reason, but it's like someone else is like, no, 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 no. They've misunderstood the blah, blah, blah. Then someone comes in with like a source argument or um, conflation with like something else. That happened with, um, I think, King of the Monsters, actually. And uh, some other stuff. It's, it's a weird yeah, adventure we've been on. But a fun one, nonetheless. Can I add that neurobiology absolutely shows that art and writing by hand have inherent neurological benefits. Just making the art has medicinal value to say nothing of cultural and communicative. I wouldn't be surprised oh, I mean, I considering really there's... Art. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's there's, why we... there's definitely like a therapeutic element to having like hobbies, filling up your time, doing something that you're proud of, working hard on, you know, getting better at a task or a craft. Yeah, um, that's why we push back on the whole, like, you know, you can have something complete instantly. It's like, eh, I don't want to have it yeah, complete I don't instantly. Do that. The I process is I to create it. I like creating it. If it was created instantly, I can't look at it and go, man, I worked hard on that. I'd go, oh. There it is. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it Yeah, you, you definitely lose something there. You lose a lot. You lose most of the thing. Here is a tautology for you. How did Bill Gates become a billionaire? He spent less money than he earned. <laughs> It's not a tautology. Yeah, not as I understand tautologies. You can, so, yeah, uh, you can spend less money than you earn and never be a millionaire. You remember the that's Simpsons gag? I didn't get rich writing checks. <laughs> oh, damn, yeah. you don't remember that reference. Oh, you do. All right, good. Uh, why you always go live when someone's mid-sentence? Why not? We like the... What? That's, it's not a cold open, is it? It's a... Um, what, what would that be called? Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's more so just to, the, the conversation never ends. Like, I don't know if there's a filmmaking tip for what I'm trying to imply with how we do EFAP, but the implication is just that you're... We, we're always chatting about shit, and the, an EFAP episode is yeah, just like, yeah. okay, now we're live doing it. <laughs> like, this is like, today you can hear us, uh, as opposed to what well, we're just hanging out in general. Yeah, we were talking before we went live. We're people, we chat a lot. And also, it, it's it's stylistically kind of nice to have just it open and we're in the middle of just whatever we were talking about before we went live. Yeah, I feel like we're one of the only shows ever to choose to not have an intro deliberately when that's considered like a scuffed and awkward thing to do. Which it is like, eh, is. fuck it, whatever. Intros can often be really weird and awkward. Oh, yeah, I, m I remember the days back in... I think I made fun of them in my Outlast videos. The amount of Outlast reviews that start with the dubstep, hyper-animated... Oh, like, fireworks God, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then you have the super hyper-animated dubstep... <laughs> and then it just yeah, that was a good cuts game, to... Right? And then it cuts to a guy who's just, hi everyone, it's me. Uh, <laughs> He's, like, <laughs> He's like just off to the side talking. on his chair. The background is like a grayish beige. <laughs> like... the guys uh, found a really cool loadout for Modern Warfare 2. It's really good. I'm going to get a lot of kills with it. I'm really uh, angry because so... the update made it so the care package and commando doesn't work anymore. I'm Were very there mad. updates to that game? Probably. Did they? They might have. That did happen. I they, can't they remember. Nerfed, it did uh, happen sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it wasn't nearly as commonplace as it is now, which is no. in general a very good thing. But yeah, remember every remember kiddos back in the day, you bought a disc in a box. Hope in you like my it. Day, that disc <laughs> yeah. was for you to keep. That's the game. If something's busted to fuck, down. then it's gonna be that way until the sequel, baby. A synthetic shilling for the AI meter. Thank you. Key thing with Power World is it's the fan game that Nintendo should have made but didn't. That's what hmm. I keep seeing. You would think that like the world of Pokemon is sort of built like built perfectly around this concept of an MMO where you have all sorts of people who can have all sorts of different roles relating to Pokemon and they can cooperate and battle each other and you have in-game leaderboards like you would have leaderboards in real life where people have records and then you would have you know you would have all of the emergent culture that comes as a result of that but you don't have to battle you could be uh you could have entire like in like in mmos you have different crafting systems and other things that you could learn you could have like yeah i want to be a pokemon doctor i want to be a pokemon breeder i want to be a pokemon this that the other thing and you could all fulfill roles that not every player could know so you might have to have multiple characters, or you might have to actually rely on other people to make sure that you're in tip-top shape. 
So if all you want to do is battle Pokemon, is like, well, you need the, you know, there's a lot of other players you might need to rely on to make sure that that infrastructure is all set up and everything. You think it'd be purpose built for it? They, they go on to say Mega Man is a reskinned Rocket Boy game that lost the license last minute. Interesting. Interesting. Look Supers, at it now. Uh, supers and highlighted messages show up here. If you change filters, this filter will only show your last 100 fan funding messages. I'm guessing that's a, a feature thing that they've added. I think I think I try to... There's like three options. Live chat, all chat, and fan funding, which is all messages that are super chats or memberships, which they fucking took forever to do that. On the back end, I've complained about this with ads, how stupid the way they make super chats work and how it can like bug out and you lose all of them. The new system I have to keep track of them seems to be working, though. I've seen less complaints lately. I'm People being like, uh... you missed mine. It's like, no, I think I've got everyone's now, which is good. I'm glad the multi-billion dollar corporation I know. was able to work out these extremely simple things. Normally, they just ruin shit and make everything <laughs> worse with their updates. They do. I'm sure they will, but for now, it works. So, 6,000 tweets can lose a man his career, but using tweets to affect positive change is just off the table now? Peepo sus. Yeah, well, that, that was part of the point we're trying to make, right? The um, the influx of complaints about Pal World's creation, whether or not they're accurate, whether or not they're big in number, whether or not they're uh, they're making good arguments just ethically as a foundation, I wouldn't dissuade them by saying, you know what, this will make no difference anyway, because they has historically have made a difference with different things. They can make a difference, even if they hadn't. They can. Um, so yeah, I, do you think nothing was ever changed by discourse? Yeah, like it, the whole thing seems really odd to me. It's just like fuck it, complain to your heart's content. If you think you found something horrible, complain. Get it, get it noticed. You find a lot of the time with like a big controversy, there'll be someone saying like, "I was talking about this three months ago, and no one mentioned anything," and it's like, "Oh shit, were you okay?" But uh, that's how you get the ball rolling a lot of the time. Uh, don't call it capitalism, call it free market. Capitalism was a word coined by Karl Marx to blame it. Okay, fucking whatever. I'm it's taking a, it, it's mine now, yeah, bitch. Yeah, it's not his anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I'm doing it out of spite. Yeah, what the fuck ever. I don't care if he was the one that came up with the word. It's just, it's an economic system. It's as simple as also, that. We can Wikipedia talk about it. it says that, um, it, that etymology dates back to the mid-17th century, so... Did Karl go back in even... time? <laughs> And steal it or forward in time. Like, no, back in time. That makes sense. But and in, in fact, Wikipedia says that Karl Marx did not use the form capitalism, but instead capital, capitalist, and capitalist mode of production. Well, I, I don't care. I don't care who made no, or where. Like this is all uninteresting learning. But yeah, I don't care. Everybody, like at this point, capitalism is a word that people have a general understanding of what it means and use. Yeah. Uh, in Marvel Comics, Thor is the son of the Cosmic Chicken, a.k.a. the Fionx, Force, and Odin. I want you to think about that. I don't know what to think about that. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. I wonder if um, if there's been a conversation about Marvel Comics changing Norse lore, and if that's a problem or not. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe more so now than before. Well, I mean, in the comics themselves, like... Uh, when they first brought in Norse shit, right? Like, it, it's incredibly unfaithful. Oh, oh. I, That's, you know, they're adapting maybe. it to their heart's content, which is something that I'm okay with, but I don't know if everyone's okay with. Hmm. Uh, tech frees people to pursue the arts and explore in classic sci-fi stories. This tech and the entire discussion around it equals Black Mirror BS come true. Maybe. I mean, there's certainly an element of truth to the idea that the more leisure time people have, the less time they spend doing you know, labor, the more that they are theoretically freed up to pursue their own personal interests. Uh, I'll work on that Fortnite Battle Pass! Ooh. Goodell quote of the day. I'll see you next episode, folks. Raid Shadow Legends, and then the video ends. Yeah, that was one of my favorite jokes. <laughs> I'll see you later, folks. Raid Shadow Legends. I just say that, and it ends. <laughs> uh, would that be a gold mandingo? I'm not sure what you mean. I don't know what that is, but if it's golden, I'm inclined to want it. Uh, Tay Tay AI took our gerbs, smaller rage, also high rags. Hello! Hello indeed. Tay had to crawl so that chat GPT could crawl better. Y yeah. Will TFA be five parts or six parts in total? Six. I saw someone say One that I apparently third. promised they would all be out by 2025. So, you know, 
I'm still in I'm still in the green zone, the safe zone right now. That's right. For now. <laughs> Maslow's hierarchy isn't really real. Skydiving would not exist otherwise because it trades safety for excitement. Self-sacrifice also doesn't fit in the hierarchy. See the need to keep breathing. I don't well, think so Maslow's I guess, hierarchy... I guess you got Maslow there, huh? Like, that, <laughs> he never well, like, thought of that. <laughs> like, surely, like, Maslow was around when there were dangerous recreational activities. I think it's probably not specifically being the safest you can possibly be or taking no risks whatsoever. It was probably something along the lines of, like, a... a, a well, so as safety. I've understood it, as I've, as I've understood it, it's always just been that fundamentally there are certain needs that need to be met before you can even start thinking about satisfying other needs. So, like, you're not going to be thinking about, you you know, figuring out philosophy and the meaning of life when you're, like, living in a cardboard box. Yeah, with, like, no you're food. scraping to get by and you don't have any... Um... Yeah. You know, when, when you're actually worried about... Yeah, if you're, you, if you're bleeding and hungry, it's like you're not going to stop to be like, you know, AI. <laughs> like, I wonder where that's going to yeah, take like, us. And, and of course, like, I presume that... And, I mean, I imagine that there's plenty of discussion and debate about how useful the hierarchy of needs is, whether it's accurate or not. But I just find it funny, the idea of Maslow hadn't thought about skydiving. Well, the thing Got is... <laughs> I don't know enough about it to say this is the case, but I would have assumed that's the top of the pyramid, isn't it? You could argue yeah, self-actualization like is skydiving. Yeah, exactly. Or even esteem. Yeah. So, yeah. Could Bob Ross paint without ever seeing a landscape? The art human beings create, even if they've never seen art made by a human before, is still some amalgamation of the data they've been exposed to. Yes, but I, I imagine this might have to do with I, I don't know how you guys feel, but I mean I think I feel like it's safe to say that all art is derivative in some way, well, shape, or form. It's just that people get really worked up about what the word derivative means because it's got a negative connotation when it's more so it can just, be used negatively you for sure. Seen, you have seen things that you like that will inform the things that you make. I think That's something that gets brought up is. is the um Depending on what AI you're using, I suppose, this would only apply to the ones that this is actually true about, because I'd have to look into it. But a lot of people end up saying that humans can create art whether or not they've had an input, right? If you drop a baby in a white room and... They'll uh, pull something from their mind, probably. Yeah, like, and you yeah. provide them the ability to use, you know, say, paints, crayons, whatever the fuck, they will make imagery. Uh, oh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like what we, you know, the, the argument that people would be making, and that you would make, even in the lens of all art being, in some sense, derivative of the work that came before it, is that, well, there's something special about you, right? A synthesis of the things that you've seen, or value, or if you want to get even more abstract, like, your being as an entity that then gets imbued in, in whatever you well, create. I've seen people highlight this as interest because with an AI that doesn't have any references, what does it create? Like, so a human without any references other than the white room, like, very unethically created, you know, they're dropped into the room and fed enough to stay alive, they'll create something. But, like, an AI without any references, what does it do? How does it create? And it's like, well, you'd have to yeah. make an actual, like, a replicant style AI, right? The one that can imagine. Yeah, well, I imagine Wally. He might if you leave. He him might, yeah. For long, I think that's part of the point of that film is that he kind of does, right? He's broken through, and the same in in a sense. There's an implication of the Terminators in Terminator that the once you allow them to start learning, they can be very creative in ways that you might not yeah, expect. Yeah, that surprise you. Mm -hmm. uh, Jordan Peterson would have an aneurysm looking at Asmongold's room. Correct. Yeah, yeah, he would. He would be so upset. He would shed a tear. <laughs> Uh, please watch the channel The Art of Aaron Blaze. He provides a non-fear-based point of view of the, what the future is for artists and AI. Uh, I think he I've heard of him. He was like one of the um, Disney animation directors like back in, back in the 2D animation days. Uh, I the, think. The four-minute joy of the chili cheeky bird is important. Okay. The chili cheeky bird? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, that's a fun name. Hmm. Saw a video of AI creating a desert or, sorry, dessert <laughs> with mushrooms, strawberries, cheese, and cream. A world class chef couldn't find anything like it. Tasted great. Okay. I'm not sure what oh, to make yeah. of that. They Dang. put a bunch of delicious things together and it was delicious. Well, if they're saying the world class chef, I don't know if they were trying to say the world class chef couldn't. 
but like like created himself or find it anywhere else, and it's only the robot can do it. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. Discussing AI and not and not getting Shad on. I know. Apparently that was a, a, a blasphemous move, and uh, it's all right. We will we will continue to do things with Shad, and I'm sure he'll continue to talk about AI. I think he still is to this day. We shall see him in the AI wars. He, you know, if the if I Robot happened, he'd be on the robot side. That's the truth, right there. <laughs> <laughs> My brain is so fried at this point. All I hear anyone say is, thing is good, but also bad. But it's good, too. But you shouldn't feel bad. Also, long man bad. Well, we all know long man good, but, you know. Yeah. I'd love for Asmund to come on EFAP and talk with you. It'll be fun. Like I said, we're on board. Uh, I'm pretty sure what Asmund is saying is that an artist's opinion of themselves doesn't matter. What? Oh, that's, that's totally different than what he said, then. Well, but, but why wouldn't it? It doesn't matter to what? It, I mean, to who? It matters to them. <laughs> uh, this, like, I don't even know what you mean. Like, uh, if, if someone said, like, do you want to know what Martin Scorsese's opinion of Goodfellas is? I'd be like, yeah. They'd be like, well, it doesn't matter, though, does it? They'd be like, oh. <laughs> like, I, don't, I, don't know, I, I, don't, I don't know how to deal with these statements. I'm not sure what, what I'm supposed uh, to assume about them. Some of my favorite artworks, I really want to know what the creators have to say, because it can really inform my, like, sense of you know, inspiration or respect for the work. Or it can have the reverse yeah. effect. Who knows? It's a bit of a gamble in a way, but um, it's insight, right? I love I love bits of insight. What am I learning from this stream is that he's just stupid in a different way than I first imagined he was stupid. I'm not gonna... I, I don't think so. I don't think he's stupid. It's, um, I think it's, it's, it's just ripe for back and forth, this whole subject, and I think a lot of people are very trigger-happy and calling everyone else stupid, right, with, with this. There's a lot of... Um, I hesitate to use the word, but identity is a lot of it is placed on this in a, in a lot of ways, and I don't blame people for that because it's regarding art, so but people can get angry about it real quick. Uh, love all you heroes. Mauler and our good boy Rags have been here since from day one. Fringy joined and was immediately one of my favorite people. Love you all. Moriarty is just a legend. Uh, take care, you fat boys and chat. Oh, that's very oh, kind. Of you. Awesome. Hooray. Thank you. Uh, hey guys, I've made two EFAP compilations if you ever want to watch them on your own time. Also, how much uh, to have Pyro Cynical on EFAP? Love you guys. He's welcome as far as I know. You, you, you yeah, don't have to like pay to get people on or anything. But... He's, uh, he, he makes long videos too. Very, very long. TV shows and stuff. And, and games and films, I think. I think. I haven't kept track of him, but that's all I know. Uh, this is not how you get good rat. No, they're... Uh, no. Not at all. The alarm clock, no. It'll linger like the smell of dead rat. There, there are people I've told about that who don't believe me. And because of course they wouldn't. That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. Why would they believe me? There's no reason for them to believe me. Crazy story. It's, it, well, it's so crazy that it's just like, nah. <laughs> it's no, just too, it's too much, on. nah. Uh, Tony. Your work has a higher level of scrutiny, unfair perhaps, but seamless to ignore and potentially the foundation of a uniquely superior career. Who's Tony? Tony Gilroy? That's a, that, could you repeat that line again? That sounded very similar to a line from Andor. Uh, Tony, your work has a higher level of scrutiny, unfair perhaps, but senseless to ignore and potentially the foundation of a uniquely superior career. That's definitely a line from Andor, but obviously not Tony. I think it was for, that would have been to Deirdre. Oh. I guess they're saying that about Tony Gilroy. Okay. Tony, cool. yeah. <laughs> uh, corn does not care from where the blood flows. Okay. Probably the EFAP I've disagreed with you the most, but it is what it is. Love y'all and love Asman. You should invite him on. I'm sure he'd love it. Sure. Maybe, maybe. Asmogold, you are welcome to come on EFAP if you're interested. Um, yep, absolutely. I'm not sure if I follow him on Twitter, but uh, I can shoot him a message someday, maybe, if he, if he wants. As for uh, the disagreement, I mean, yeah, it was, it was a spicy episode, and I think it's because it's a spicy discussion anyway, right? I don't think there's anything anyone can say on this subject that won't get them uh, in a position where people will be like, I fucking disagree with that, you know? Like pro-AI, anti-AI, yeah. or in the middle. In fact, in the middle might actually be the most contentious place in the to be. Is probably the worst. Yeah. <laughs> Which is all right. Um, oh, and we've got a Pokemon of the day. Sh oh boy. Shed Shedinja. 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 
Is that like a version of Greninja that I've never heard of? Well, I was going to say, I don't think I've heard of oh, this Oh, okay. One. I think you'll like this one. I think you'll like this one. All right. Let me post this here for you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's chill. Uh, looks like oh, yeah, this yeah, was... Him. Yeah. Um... I like the one, the like Sapphire it. entry, if you can find it. Okay, Sapphire. Shedinja is a peculiar Pokemon. It seems to appear unsought in a Pokeball after a Ninkata evolves. This bizarre Pokemon is entirely immobile. It doesn't even breathe. Hmm. So, it looks like it appears in a Pokeball when an Ninkata evolves. Um... It's a discarded bug shell that came to life. Peering into the crack on its back is said to there it is. Is said to steal one's spirit. There we go. We we got there. All right. Um. Yeah, it looks like it's said to steal the spirit of anyone peering into its hollow body from its back. <laughs> wow, well, of course. Um, let's see. Yeah. Well, that I mean, that's that. That's the last ep uh, message for the episode. So thank you all very oh, much. Oh my goodness! Uh, we'll 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 be heading out now. Hope you had some fun and whatever it is you're up to. Best of best of fun. Best of luck. Uh, Goodbye, everyone, and thanks again. See you later, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.